Hello, planet Earth. Welcome to my YouTube channel. We're at IDK, my BFF Jill, 730. I'm Preston L. Young, wishing you warm salutations and congratulations as always. You've made your way to the Buffington Post. You are invited! Today I'll be taking a break from the Buffyverse as it is time for an exercise in futility. Yes, the summer movie season officially ended this past weekend with Labor Day weekend, but we're going to go all the way back to where it officially began on Memorial Day weekend with the premiere of X-Men Apocalypse. Now, X-Men Apocalypse was received with, well, be nice and say mixed reviews, but honestly, like, I enjoyed the movie personally, okay? So... I enjoyed the movie when I left the theater. I was like, oh, we got the Phoenix moment, we got the, this moment, that moment, that moment, whatever. I was pretty, like, satisfied with it. But on the way home, by the time I got home, I had picked this movie apart, and there were so many glaring problems with it that I've been thinking about it all summer. Like, we've got to fix X-Men Apocalypse, and so that's what I'm here to do today. Uh, but first, I want to talk about a few of the criticisms against the movie that I felt were a little unfair. Uh, Psylocke, played by Olivia Munn, most people were like, what are you doing, what's your point, like, what's your motivation, etc. But I found it to be, like, pretty, like, understatedly awesome, because here she is, she lives in this world where mutants are having to hide underground, and she is facilitating them being able to move about and move freely through the world without being detected as being mutants, right? And so here she is, she's a bodyguard to Caliban. She's one of the most powerful telepaths in the world, and she's literally like this underground bodyguard. So then, here comes Apocalypse, and he offers her another job. Sure, it's as being a bodyguard, but you're not going to be a bodyguard living underground, trying to, like, hide mutants away from all the other people. I want you to be my bodyguard as I try and put mutants at the top of society. Like... When you think about it that way, sure, she just goes from being bodyguard to bodyguard, but the ideas that Caliban and the, the world that we all exist in have about where mutants belong, and the ideas that Apocalypse has about where mutants belong, they are completely different. And for someone like Psylocke, who is literally just like sitting down here in a basement wasting her life away, it would be so freeing and um, kind of empowering for her. And so... Here, I'm going to let you access the full potential of your power, and you can stand right next to me at the top of the world. Like, it's a pretty sweet deal, and so I get it, Psylocke, I really do. Duh. Jennifer Lawrence as Mystique. Most people are like, oh, she was so checked out, she was just phoning it in. Mystique is checked out. Like, it's written into the plot that Mystique is not bout it, bout it with this X-Men, like, mutant, freedom, proud, whatever life. She wants to be understated. She wants to be under the radar. She doesn't want to be all up in this crazy fight. She's over it, but she gets thrust into it. And, I mean, you could argue that, you know, Jennifer Lawrence is just kind of like the same way, just kind of thrust into it and over it. But at the same time, I don't feel like that's fair to the actor when the script calls for you to be checked out. You know what I mean? Now do you understand? And people were all upset about Apocalypse, like releasing all the nuclear weapons out into, like, the atmosphere or whatever, because why? Like, why are you upset about that? It makes sense. He's saying, I am, myself, powerful enough to, like, take you all on. So you need to come at me with exactly what it is that you are, because I'm me, and I can do whatever. Bye, Felicia. And so, like, it made sense to me. The thing that makes less sense to me is the fact that nobody's worried about all of these nuclear warheads out in the atmosphere and how they're going to affect not only, like, the weather, because, I mean, you have to think about comets and asteroids and all this good stuff. Like, one of these nuclear weapons is going to get, like, fucked up. And I don't know what that's going to do as far as, like, radiation coming into the atmosphere, you know what I mean? But those points aside, let's get into it and fix X-Men Apocalypse. Here we go. The time has come! Step 
So the biggest problem for me when it comes to X-Men Apocalypse is that it's Charles Xavier's fault, right? Like this whole thing is his fault. Why? Well, he like mind raped Moira McTaggart at the end of first class, making her forget all about him and all about like the mutants that she had come into contact with. All this fun stuff, right? So she's the one who is like down poking into these like mutant conspiracy theories and all this good stuff and whoop de doo she unwittingly unleashes Apocalypse. So yeah, it's all Charles's fault because if he hadn't mind raped Moira, then she would have been in correspondence with him this whole time. Like, she would have been bouncing ideas off of him and, you know, trying to get his input on these mutant conspiracy theories that she was trying to uncover. But no, Charles took away her free will. Thanks, Charles. Now we've got Apocalypse to deal with. So basically, my version of the movie is making sure that we have Charles really, really deal with the consequences of his own power. So once we get Scott into the school, whatever, whatever. we find out that Jean has these crazy making dreams that are basically like ripping up the walls in her room and scaring the shit out of all the students. So in that stain on the X-Men movie franchise, we find out that Professor Xavier in the past had put up these mental blocks around like the Phoenix persona within Jean's mind so that she couldn't access it, okay? And they completely missed the opportunity to fix that. Okay, so when Xavier comes into Jean's room and she's having these crazy dreams, whatever, whatever, at that point, you need to have Xavier put up these walls in Jean's mind to stop her from gaining access to her full power. After he does that, he can like pacify the minds of the student body at large so that people forget that Jean was scary and crazy and like, ah, and that way, like, Everybody would be hunky-dory, but you would have this question for the audience from the beginning of the movie, like, wow, Xavier can actually, you know, change people's very thoughts. He can change the way we feel about things. He can change our memories. And how right is that? How good is that? Um, that is a really interesting thing to do for the Charles Xavier character, and it's right there. You have the stuff in the shitty movie that we need to undo anyway, so why not have him put those blocks up in her mind, mind rape all the students, and have us deal with that throughout the movie? So whatever, whatever, stuff happens, you know. So part of Apocalypse's power is that he can basically, like, recognize and actualize the full potential of, you know, mutants' individual powers, okay? We have the part where Apocalypse, like, finds Xavier through Magneto's mind, he does the whole nuclear warhead thing, they teleport to the X-Mansion, okay? So we're going to remove that whole we went to the mall scene, okay? And we're going to have those young X-Men, including Jean, down there because Jean needs to learn more about Cerebro or whatever, like, right in your own shit here. So when Apocalypse sees Jean, he doesn't want Xavier anymore. He doesn't want that because he can actually see the full potential of Jean's power and he's going to want her. But whoop de doo Xavier has just put these mental blocks on Jean and so she can literally not defend herself. See what I'm talking about? Like, whoa, look what you done, Charles. So at this point, we have Apocalypse straight up kill Havoc rather than having it be like up in the air, like, oh, his body's gone, whatever, whatever, he's dead, question mark. So Havoc does not destroy the X-Mansion and Apocalypse gets away with Jean. And as he's doing this, our other characters get thrown into the danger room because, hello, we're cutting out all that bullshit trip to Canada. It was stupid. Where you guys? I'm going in. Yeah, we're cutting out the whole Canada thing, and instead we're going to have an action scene where everybody's like kind of thrown into the danger room, all this crazy stuff is going on, and they have to like get their wits about them and somehow like defeat the bullshit that's in the danger room, okay? Scott actually like ends up being the one to blow up the X Mansion. You still get your Quicksilver like rescue scene, okay? So at this point, of course, we're switching out Xavier and Jean's locations within the movie, okay? And you've got Xavier, and he can be lamenting the fact that he just took away Jean's defenses against Apocalypse. Like, she was this, like, Omega-level mutant, and she might have been the only one to be able to stand up to him. He took that away from her, and now, whoop de doo they've got to go and track down Apocalypse to save Jean and not Charles. Because my biggest problem with the movie is that 
If Apocalypse thinks so very little of humans, why would he want Xavier's power? He doesn't hold humans in any kind of regard. He doesn't even consider them. They are lesser beings to him. And so, what would be the point of him wanting to control the minds of humans? It would seem like not even an afterthought to him. Like, the thoughts of humans don't really concern him. If he's really about this survival of the fittest, he wouldn't want to control their minds. He would want to tap into genes like awesome power and like have absolute raw power over them rather than, you know, the power of persuasion. It doesn't make a lot of sense for him to want Xavier's power if he has such low regard for humans in the first place. You understand what I'm saying? So in the climax of the movie, rather than Xavier kind of like giving Jean this psychic pep talk, instead he actually removes those blocks on her mind. He removes the blocks on Moira's mind, and he removes the kind of mind rape that he put on all the students to kind of pacify their attitudes about Jean. Because at this point, he will realize that he's no better than Apocalypse. Apocalypse is trying to rule with an iron fist and not let anybody have any choices. And that's what Xavier has been doing throughout the movie, right? Like taking away people's choices. He started with Moira way back in first class. This bitch started this whole thing, right? And then he did the same to Jean and students. And so by the end of the movie, he realizes there's really no difference between myself and Apocalypse. And what I have done to inhibit these individuals is just wrong. So he removes the mental blocks. Jean Phoenix is up. We basically have the same beats, but it's a better story because it matters to a character. Like the, the problem with Xavier's power is his power. He can literally control your thoughts, and that's very scary. And we want Charles to be someone who we can trust, because if we don't trust him, we're never going to know, like, if he's controlling our perception of him, you know what I mean? And so I feel like if you take the movie this way, if you replace Jean with Xavier, it provides um, a more logical... Um, kind of fight for Apocalypse because Jean has this real raw superpower and Xavier has, you know, these these big question marks around his morality and the ethics of mind control. And I feel like we just fixed X-Men Apocalypse, but nobody asked me, did they? So anyway, what do you think? Do you think this could have fixed X-Men Apocalypse? Do you think it's a better story? Do you think we need to call Brian Singer and make some complaints? I'm sure there's like a waiting list on complaints for this movie. But anyway, like I said, I didn't hate this movie. I just felt like it didn't take the logical turns that it should have. And I'd love to hear what you thought of everything in the comment section down below. But that's pretty much all I've got for today, you guys. I hope you're having a great 2016 so far. Everybody, you can come right back here to the Buffington Post anytime for Buffy the Vampire Slayer reviews, Angel and Faith reviews, Buffyverse discussions, discussions on the other Slayers, and more. Tomorrow it'll be time for my two-year anniversary video. I've been doing this for two years, and I'm having a great time with you guys. Uh, have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye. Light's free.